So in this episode, we're gonna be looking at scopes. I'm gonna show you exactly how I've got my scope set up in my studio for when I'm grading. Now, those of you who followed my channel for a while know that I use Nobe Omniscopes. This is a company called Time in Pixels. It's a third party bit of software that is dedicated to giving you the best scopes possible. This is used by like loads of famous colorists all over the world. It's absolutely fantastic. So. I'm not using the DaVinci Resolve scopes. There's nothing wrong with the DaVinci Resolve scopes. I must just say that immediately. They're exactly the same quality. Just with no Omniscope, I've got a lot more customizability and I've actually got a choice of, as it stands at the minute, they're constantly developing this, but about 19 different scopes to choose from. So I'm gonna show you the ones that I use. I don't use all 19, but I'm gonna show you the ones that I use, show you my setup. I'm gonna share my settings with you. So I'll put a link to those in the description so you can download those for free. And we'll just talk about what I'm doing with it and how it works. And it's a particularly new feature that I'm using as well that I've only just sort of got into. So I wanna share that with you on here. So first of all, let's have a quick look at the DaVinci Resolve scope. So they're sitting down here. We can pop them out with this little arrow here. And this gives us the ability to do a four or even a nine view here. And one quick tip, if this box isn't big enough to start with, you can't get into this view. So you just need to expand this box a little bit. So what have I got going on here? We've got an RGB parade. We've got our classic waveform. We've got a histogram and a vector scope. And there's actually a fifth one in here as well. You've got the CIE chart as well. These have a certain amount of customizability as well. So if we look at the RGB parade, for example, we can click here and we can choose to colorize it or not. We can change the extent of the trace, so the intensity of the trace and the actual display, the graticule as well. So we have some customizability in here. So what I love with Nobe Omniscope is I've got many more features than just the ones that are in DaVinci Resolve. So we're getting exactly the same readings. There's nothing wrong with the Resolve scopes. However, I have much more customizability in here and I have many more options. So let me show you my setup and how I've got it running. Now there's two different ways of running Nobe Omniscope. You can run it inside DaVinci Resolve itself. So if you're running on a single machine or maybe you're on a laptop, you can run it and it will appear in the effects tab here. So you just apply it as a plugin effect. Best way of doing that is go to the edit page, put an adjustment layer on the top and apply it there. And then you can have it sitting on top or you can put it onto a dual display so you can have it running side by side all the time, as you can do with the existing Resolve scopes as they are at the moment. Now, the other way of running Nobe Omniscope is on a dedicated machine. I've got mine on a Mac down here. It runs on PC as well. It doesn't need to be super fast. I've got a video card in there. It doesn't even need to be a Blackmagic card. It can be an AJA card. I've got a live video feed from my Ultra Studio going into that machine, giving me a dedicated machine just for processing the scopes, which makes them super responsive. And it means I'm not taking up any resources on my DaVinci Resolve system. So first of all, let's have a look at the ones that are exactly the same as in DaVinci Resolve. So we've got our vector scope here. It's a standard vector scope. We've got here our waveform. This is our RGB parade waveform. And we've got a waveform up here, just the regular waveform in here. Again, these are all customized where you can go to the settings and change all the scaling and all the brightness, all that sort of stuff. I've also got here my histogram. So they're the same settings that I've got in DaVinci Resolve. So what are all these other features in here? First of all, let me take you through this one. The vector scope up here is split into LMH. So it's low, mid and high range. And it allows me to see what's happening in the low regions, the mid regions and the high regions with my saturation. Now you can actually do that in the DaVinci Resolve. Let me show you. If I go back to my scopes over here, what you can do, if we make this into a nine display like this, we can take our vector scope here. And what we can do is make, let's make three vector scopes down here. So one, two, and three. And if you go to the settings, you can set this one to be low. You could set this one to be mid, and you can set this one to be high. And that's analyzing just those regions. So you can see here, the trace is very different on each of these. And this one is my global vector scope. So that's exactly the same as what I've got going on in Omniscope. Now you'll also notice I'm working on a particularly large screen here. This is a 27 inch Dell curved screen. It's not intentional. It's just a screen I had lying around and I've actually just got really used to having it, but most colorists would be working on something a little bit smaller. It's obviously giving out quite a lot of light intensity. So I have the levels reduced on here as much as I can, but I've also got another mode that I go into, which I'll show you shortly. Okay. So moving around this scope here is a waveform. It's an RGB parade waveform, but I've got it zoomed in to just show me the bottom 15% of my image. So so what this is great for is analyzing my shadows and my blacks. So it's a really zoomed in view of just that region. So I love this scope being set up all the time. Down here, I've got my time code being read from the DaVinci Resolve timeline. This one here is just a live video feed coming in. But what's really good with this is if I want to just sample his skin tone here, I can actually just grab it with my mouse and keep hold of it. And I can analyze that just on the scope. So it's isolating that area. But what's also good, if I press shift, I can actually let go of the mouse and then I can go onto my panel, start grading. And these measurements adjust all the time. So this is 
is a really useful thing with Omniscope. And to release that, just click your mouse and it's gone. This one here, the black and white image, I use it as a very quick glance for looking at contrast and exposure, but I also have my QC built into this, so my quality control. And I've got it set to show me if there's any blanking errors. So when I'm working with stock footage, for example, or um, different resolutions of footage, which we do quite a lot, I do a lot of documentaries where we have a lot of archive footage, I wanna just check that I've not got any video lines missing at the top, any blanking, and this will start flashing red at me if I do that. Moving on to this next one is my skin tone indicators. I've got it set up so that if the skin tone is sitting on the skin vector line, which is a common line you'll see on a vector scope, you've got those in DaVinci Resolve as well, then it shows as yellow. And if it's going anywhere outside of that, so towards green or towards magenta, then the skin tone in here will change accordingly. So this is a really quick way of just seeing where that skin tone is lying. It doesn't have to lie on the, on the skin tone line, but I want it to be consistent throughout my shots. So if I want it slightly magenta, I want them all to look magenta. The other one here is my false color. So I use this when I'm initially starting my exposure settings, when I'm doing my grade, and I can see at a glance exactly where my image is sitting using false color. And there's loads of different scopes in here as well. So if I go to my presets, they're all here. I'm using the one by Flanders, and but there's Atomos, there's whatever you want in there. Now, the last one I've got set up on here is called Twin Peaks, and this is new. So I'm gonna show you how this works in some detail, but I just wanna explain that Twin Peaks is only available in the pro version of Omniscope. So there's a video version and a pro version. The main differences between the two is the pro version has Twin Peaks. The pro version also does 12-bit processing. So the video version does 8-bit and 10-bit. The pro version allows you to do 12-bit processing. And the other thing it has is some of the quality control tools. So the blanking and it can do HDR analysis and things like that are in the pro version. They're the main takeaways. If you go to the website at timeandpixels.com, there's a full checklist of exactly what's in each version. I'm also gonna be giving you a discount code at the end of this episode, so stick around if you are interested in buying this. So let me show you how quick and easy it is to actually customize this. So if I take out the snapshot one, for example, let's just remove it. Then you just go up here and you go to scopes and you say add, new source signal or add whichever one you actually want. So let's add a new source signal. That appears here. And then you just move it around and you can see this kind of four squares appearing, four or five squares. And depending on which side you drop it on, depends where it goes. So if I drop it here, it's gonna sit next to this one. And then I just expand it out as I did before. And then you can go up here and just say, save layout. So I've got another layout here, which is called Darren Large. I'm gonna show you this one. This is one that I use every now and again. Sometimes I don't want all those big colorful scopes that show me my video feed. I just want some nice, simple, plain scopes. So in here, I've just got a classic vector scope in here. It's slightly zoomed in, which I like. I've got my LMH vector scopes here. So I'm showing my low, mids and highs. I've got the Twin Peaks, which I'm gonna show you how that works in a moment. And I've got my classic RGB parade. So I can switch these using my stream deck or I can just press option two and three in here and they will change. And if I press option, it gives you a video overlay. So if I go to these three scopes up here, you see when I press option, I'm getting, this is showing me what's included in the blacks. This is showing me what's included in the mid range. And this is showing me what's in the high. So we can see here's just the very highlights on his shirt is in that vector. So let's have a look at Twin Peaks and explain what that is doing. Now, if I right click on here and press solo, you get an enlarged view. I can also, again, do that on my Stream Deck, but this is showing me what Twin Peaks is. So what Twin Peaks is actually doing is measuring luminance, saturation, and hue in one scope. So let me show you. This is just a black and white image. Our white level is here, our black point is in the middle, and our white is also at this edge here. And on the sides, we've got blue on this side, we've got red down here, and green, is here, okay? So watch what happens when I start introducing a bit of color into this gray image. So I'm gonna push this grayscale towards blue. And what we're doing, I'm sort of blue and magenta, and you can see that happening here. We're going slightly towards the reds here, leaning towards the blue side, and we've got a very strong presence of blue over here. Let's go the other way, and I'm gonna push it towards yellow. And you can see where yellow sits in this trace now, it's here. Okay, and we're obviously going much warmer with our image. Let's go towards the red, let me just get rid of that. And you can see that bending towards the red. And if I go to green as well, just to show you all of them, you can see how it works. All right, let's have a look at that on a color image. So this is full color. So what we're seeing here is this is brightness up and down and saturation is this way and hue is obviously depending which angle it goes towards. So the further it reaches the extents on this side, the more saturated the image. So let's look at this with some more practical examples. So this shot has been color managed and I've got a little bit of grading on it. So if I just undo that, that's it. 
color manage. This is it with some balance going on and it looks great. What we're getting on here, we've got a nice trace if it was too saturated, the spread would be going out towards the edges. We've got a pretty good straight line going on. So he's got a white t-shirt on there. He's got black hair. So that's looking pretty good. But let's just compare it to the next two shots in this scene. So we've got one here and one here. So what I'm seeing straight away is if I go back, we've actually got much more luminance in these two shots. So these two shots are brighter than this first shot. So we need to address that. And also we've got her red dress in here which is obviously why we're getting this extreme side. But in this shot, we don't actually see her. So there's probably a little bit too much red in there as well. So let's address that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out a little bit of red in here. And you can see the trace balancing up really nicely there. Let's pull out a little bit of green as well. Not too much. And I'm just gonna increase a little bit of brightness in there. I'm just gonna use on my offset for this. I could use curves. And let's see how that balances up with the other two. And that is much more in tune. I'm accounting for her red dress being this part here. So this is giving us a really good idea of luminance and saturation and hue in one tool. So let's have a look at another scene. We've got a shot here that looks very well balanced to me. It's a nice neutral room. Her skin tone looks good. She's got a nice blue shirt on. Looking at the scopes, nothing's heavily saturated or too bright. But if we go to the next shot, we can clearly see that they're out of balance. So I'm gonna balance this up and I'm gonna show you a different technique. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to here and I go to this thing called versions. And what that allows me to do is select via any of these options. So I'm gonna use the one here called selected clips. And when I do that, all I've gotta do now is select the clips that I want to be in my versions. So I'm gonna press command, I'm gonna choose this one and this one. And what's happening on my scopes is that they are on top of each other now. So when I go to my Twin Peaks, for example, the two images are sitting on top of each other and all I've got to do is line them up. Now Twin Peaks is a really good one to use for this because I'm doing luminance and hue and saturation all in one tool. Otherwise I've got to look at the waveforms. So here you can see there's image one, there's image two. On my waveforms here, image one, image two. And this is just a really good way of seeing all that. But what I need to be careful of is that the luminance is slightly tricking me here because at the top it's showing me this white edge that's being highlighted by the versions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change mode. I'm gonna go into my other view. And then I've got a nice larger view of my Twin Peaks and I'm gonna go into Resolve and just adjust my offset bit. Now, if I go extreme, you'll see what I mean by the sitting on top of each other. Okay, so I'm going just extreme. There's the image underneath and there's the image on top that I'm actually adjusting. So all I've gotta do is try and get them to sit on top of each other. I'm ignoring the extreme of the whites and something like that. Let's take the versioning off. And actually that's really well balanced and I wasn't even looking at the shot. I was just purely looking at the scope. So we've got really good balance going on there now. And then either using my stream deck or just pressing option three on here and back to my regular scope view. So moving on to this shot here, what we're gonna do is make the whites in this a little bit whiter. I don't want to be pure white, but that's really easy to assess on the Twin Peaks. The straighter that line is, the less saturation is going on. And basically any saturation I really want in here is her skin tone and a little bit of warmth in the whites. So this is a perfect tool to use to analyze this. So I'm gonna to switch to HDR and I'm just gonna move slightly away and I'm just watching how well I can get those lined up. So that looks really good. And I've obviously got a little bit of skin tone left in there. Let's enable and disable that. It might be a little bit much. I could go back a little bit. It's really hard to do with my mouse. I'm used to doing this on the panel, but something like that. So that's where we were before and that's where we are now. So again, another good use of these scopes. So the image is looking great. We haven't got cold whites here. We've just got a nice natural white, but let's say I just want to cool off the shadows a little bit more. I'm going to keep an eye on my twin peaks. I'm going to go to my HDR tool here and I'm going to my shadow. I could do this in curves as well. And I'm just going to cool off the shadows ever so slightly. And by keeping an eye on my twin peaks, I'm watching the black levels balance up. Something like that. I don't want to get any more than that. And it's really easy to see. And that is now giving us a nice bit of split toning in the image. So hopefully that's given you a good insight into the tools that I'm using in No Omniscope. It's fully customizable. You've got 19 different scopes in there to make it really your own. I use it on every single broadcast job that I do. I've been using it for years. It's well documented on my channel. You can see that. I know colorists all over the world who are using this. In fact, I know Hollywood colorists who are using No Omniscope. 
They keep bringing out new things like that Twin Peaks thing. Their support's fantastic. And I can get you 15% discount if you are interested in buying it. If you go to timingpixels.com, look at the video or the Pro Nob Omniscope license. And if you type in Darren at checkout, D-A-R-R-E-N, I think it's in capital letters, but that's gonna get you 15% discount. I absolutely love it. I don't know what else to say, really. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.